ChatGPT versus Microsoft Copilot. What's the difference? Let's break down all the key differences that will affect organizations. So number one is gonna be grounding. So what is grounding? Grounding is just the ability of, of the AI to use extra information to answer your questions, whatever that prompt is. You, you know, there's the internal knowledge base that those things are trained on. Um, I think chat GPTs is um, as of maybe some date last year in 2023, something along those lines. And anything outside of that information is gonna be uh, from the web, for instance, and chat GPT, that's how it's able to do grounding. It was, it'll, it'll get information from the web uh, and, and use that to kind of augment its in, internal knowledge base. And that's how it'll answer your questions. Copilot, on the other hand, is going to also have the web grounding, just like uh, chat GPT does. But then it's also going to be grounded on graph. It's going to actually know where your business data is. It's going to be able to answer a lot of questions about that. And that's a really, really big difference because it knows how to access all of your data, whether that's in graph, whether that's coming from Power Platform connectors, it knows how to find that stuff and bring all that in so that it can answer very relevant questions about your business data. Now, a, a real popular topic is creating a custom GPT, uh, a, a custom uh, a custom chat GPT, uh, for instance, or a custom co-pilot. Now, there's different approaches that each of these products take. Uh, ChatGPT allows you to create a custom GPT. I haven't gone through that particular process, but I know it is in there. It's, it's behind a paywall, so you know, you've got you've to pay for the service for that. But you can create your own uh, GPT. Now, Copilot has two different real really two different ways to create that custom GPT. You can create a custom copilot, and that is one way. You can also create a declarative copilot. Now, this is a brand new feature that is about to come out. Now, this is a really, really close uh, product to a custom GPT. The declarative copilot is kind of more of a standalone kind of thing. You can access it from within the copilot interface. So that is going to be the number one um, comparison between those two uh, types of features. Now, but the custom copilot is also a really, really powerful thing because it's not a general copilot. See, co ChatGPT is a general um AI uh, interface. It's 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 really broad. It's designed to do a whole lot of things, but it can't do any of them really well. Microsoft Copilot, same same kind of thing. There, it's a really broad AI uh, platform. It can do a lot of stuff, but if you need it to do something extremely well, if you need it to focus on a small amount of data and, and answer questions very, very precisely on that, that's where the custom copilots come into play. That'll be using Copilot Studio. And actually, I've got a course that has just started accepting enrollments uh, today. And if you want to find out more information about Copilot Studio and how to use that to create custom copilots, this is going to be perfect for, uh, for beginners. And you'll see a link down in the description below for that course. So Copilot has two different ways to kind of create that custom GPT. One is is a, a lot more of a popular option at the moment uh, because of the low cost, especially compared to Copilot for M365. And it is it is a lot more uh, business case specific, but the declarative copilots are going to be that a, d the direct uh, equivalent to Chat GPT's uh, custom GPT. So extensibility is going to be another really big difference that you'll notice if you start to look into it. With Chat GPT, you're going to have to be basically a Python developer. You're going to have to install the SDKs. You'll have to to learn the APIs. You're going to have to be a developer. Period. Now, Copilot, on the other hand, will have, as I mentioned before, it's going to have Copilot Studio. That's a it's a visual way of building out Copilots, but building out plugins for Copilots, uh, th things like that. It's going to be a much easier path. There is still a pro code path. So if you want if you are a developer and you want to develop using Visual Studio Code and things like that, that is all still there. But you don't have to. 
And that is a key difference. If you are not a developer and you want to be using AI tools and developing your own AI tools, things like that, you've got some really low code and no code uh, options there with Copilot Studio. Now, can the model be trained? There's another really, really big difference. Now, Samsung famously uh, had some developers that plugged in their code into ChatGPT. And they didn't have their privacy settings set correctly on their accounts. And they ended up training the model on the source code for proprietary Samsung software. That's not a great scenario. That's a really, really bad thing because it's now in the model. Other users can now start asking ChatGPT about the code about the Samsung source code, how it does uh, different things. And the model the model knows exactly how the source code works. So it's going to be able to answer those questions. And um, I believe even spit out the exact code. I'm not sure on that. But that's because ChatGPT is it allows you to train the model. It allows you to teach it new things so that you're not always having to rely on grounding, essentially. Uh, the the internal knowledge base will eventually grow. That's why you're able to use it for free, by the way. Uh, It's because they want you to start teaching it new things. And unless you know about that particular setting, you're going to be teaching the model as well. Copilot, on the other hand, while it is using GPT-3, GPT-3.5, 4, it's, you know, keeping up with the latest models and stuff like that, but it is done in a much more secure way. You cannot teach the model. You can't train the model. There is some fine tuning, but that's a different kind of process. But the same way you can train a chat GPT, you cannot train Copilot. It is not possible. There are blocks in there. It is, it, it, there is no write back mechanism to teach the Copilot, to train the, the Copilot on new things. So there's a very, very uh, hard boundary there to protect your organization's data from your users. Really, that's what it's about. It's to protect the users from themselves so that they don't actually train the model uh, for someone else's benefit. So very, very big difference there. Uh, if you there are, there are secure ways to use chat, chat GPT to make sure you're not training the model, but it's it's one of those things you're going to have to know about the settings. You're going to have to be checking them every single time you go in there to make sure it is still set because somehow things accidentally get flipped back the other way to allow training again. Uh, maybe this intentional, maybe it's not, I don't know, but it is a very key thing you want, need to understand is how that training works and the differences between ChatGPT that allows training and Copilot that does not. But here's something you do want to be able to do, and that's integrate with your applications, integrate with the Microsoft products that you're using every day. Now, there's plugins for some of the Office applications, so you could use ChatGPT, but there's nothing like the level of integration that Copilot has got uh, with, with Word, Excel, PowerPoint, but with also things like SharePoint, uh, things like uh, teams, uh, th- those things that you might be in on a regular basis, and you need uh, AI to not just be there a- as a chat session, but to actually understand what application you're in. And it has special powers, based superpowers, you can kind of say, to be able to interact with that particular service. And I've made videos recently on SharePoint Copilot, uh, Click to Copilot, which the, those are both products coming to SharePoint that are co-pilots that will work very, very different. One is is even customizable with Copilot Studio. So uh, the other one, actually, I think actually both might be customizable through uh, through Copilot Studio, but we're still waiting for some details on some of that stuff. Now, footnotes is another one of those things. Chat GPT. So uh, actually, let let me back up. So What I mean by a footnote is if you're asking, if you're sending a prompt to AI, you're asking a question, you're trying to find information. When it returns that response, it would be nice if AI could give you the proof, uh, you know, it'll show its work of where it found the information. So it'll give you the answer and then there'll be a little number. And below that, it will it will tell you what 
what site on the internet, which page or which document in OneDrive, for instance, it found the information from so you can fact check the responses. That's a really nice feature. Copilot has that built in. It's all right there. Anytime it finds information from a document, from a web link, it's gonna give you the location of that so you can, again, fact check it. ChatGPT, sometimes it will do that. It's not often, and it's not to the extent that Copilot has got. So Copilot's got a big advantage uh, in that realm. Another big one is kind of goes back to some of the, the security and privacy stuff uh, with that Samsung case, but it's going to be the compliance features. So compliance, I don't know that there's actually any compliance really built into the chat GPT products other than uh, some basic responsible AI practices and, and safety security, uh, more relating to what type of information it can produce. But Copilot, on the other hand, is part of the Microsoft ecosystem. It's part of M365. Uh, actually, it's part of uh, Azure as well. But, you know, there's, there's a whole lot of uh, locations where there are uh, different co-pilots. But the fact that it's part of the Microsoft ecosystem means that it's going to honor all of those, sec those security controls, all of your compliance controls. Think Purview, um, uh, Defender for Cloud Apps, all of those places where you have policies and settings configured to protect your highly sensitive and confidential data. All of those controls are going to be honored. You'll be able to uh, still get information from them using Copilot uh, if you choose to anyway. But it's going to ensure that any, any controls that were placed on that data, all of that stuff is respected um, and because it's all integrated into the world that we work in. So that's a really important point is just how good the compliance is. Now, they're, they're, they're continuing to add more compliance features uh, to, to deepen that relationship between the security and compliance layer of, of Microsoft's uh, world and Copilot. Uh, but even as, as at the time of recording, it's, it's definitely extremely good, and I don't think you'd be disappointed with it. So, Steve, what's the big takeaway from this? I think for me, the big takeaway is the fact that you've got two very, very popular AI products that are competing with each other. Uh, ChatGPT is, is open AI is constantly um, working on the next um, LLM version. Omni has been out um, not not for, for not long. Uh, that's 4.0. Uh, and it's it's got a lot of powerful things that it can do. It can do multimodal. Um, it can it can you could interrupt it. Uh, there, there's a lot of cool things that it's got. Copilot is competing very, very hard with it. Now it's able to use now it's able to use the exact same models, but then you know Microsoft puts their own um, added value on top of that. But you you still have those two companies that are competing for business and they're innovating as hard and fast as they can. And that is going to be a huge win for us. That's really the big takeaway for me is. I like to see the the bloodthirsty competition, uh, uh, the, the the fierce competition between these two companies, because it's always going to result in um, more competitive pricing for us and much faster feature development for us. So we get lots of new stuff to play with. So what do you, what do you think? Let me know what your, what your comments are down below, and what your thoughts are on on. You know, the, the two products, do you prefer one over the other? Uh, if you like ChatGPT Chat more than Copilot, please let me know what what is the reasoning behind that. Uh, I just, just from my own knowledge, I want to understand where you're coming from on that. I'm not saying you're wrong. I just want to know, you know, where, what's the reasoning? Help, help me out here because while ChatGPT does have some some big advantages, Copilot's got so much more. Um, you know, OpenAI is going to develop the model faster, um, you know, and release it. But Copilot is is definitely the winner for me. Uh, but let me know down below. And if you want to see more information about uh, Copilot Studio, 
Uh, I've made a video that I think will help you get started. Uh, you can click up into this corner right here, and I'll see you on the next one.